We're in George Heller, West 80 South Poles. Uh, we're moving to the moving to the 80. We we're over on Maxine's now. It's nice out, so we're moving to the 80. Pulling the dog feeders over over to the 80 now. Um, got the vet coming out today to start the TB testing on. Uh, that's going up to Ontario. That's something they require Canada does to get them up in there. Uh, we've got to do a couple other things too. He's got to get a tattoo on Monday. And uh, whoops, hit the horn. But uh, yeah, glad I had this track machine. It's working out great. Um, tracks there. It's working out good. We had, this is all drifty in here. To, the south end of Stephen Debs here and uh, it drifted up pretty bad so it was nice to have this machine to get us through the drifts and everything uh, but uh, yeah just uh, we're uh, moving over here to the 80 got the sheep following the dog feeders it, it, uh, it works pretty good to have them do that Coming through the gate, that's Steve's deer stand there. Here's the gate into the 80. The timeless end posts. There's our salt blocks. We got them in these troughs here just so they're not laying on the ground. Just some regular salt. But yeah, still got a little bit of snow. I looked at the forecast. It's supposed to be uh, like. 60 degrees next Friday, a week from today. So that just seems crazy, but it is going to be April, so uh, I guess it's about that time of year we need to start thinking about warming up, I guess. So I'm going to park these dog feeders over here on the top of the hill, kind of, so they got a vantage point to what's going on. And you can see down where the cattle are, I got. Got the hay unrolled down there so it's closed up by the gate so I can get them into the corral there at the holding pen. I, on the other side of that green shed I've got a, a little holding facility, a little holding pen and and uh, some gates, loadout chute. I put in sort of a bud box. It's not a full-fledged one yet. Uh, I've got a do a couple other things to it to get it to that point but uh yeah well, let's unhook these feeders and then we'll drive up there and i'll show you them real quick try not to make this too long of a video but uh yeah i got these feeders so i can show you these i haven't really featured these at all too much um i got this design from greg judy of course where i pretty much get everything uh just got some hog panel here and then we cut out we cut out these pieces here so there's about a foot right here between uh, the ground and and the uh, wire so it gives a chance for the dogs to climb in there and then this piece right here this piece in the front that's what prevents the sheep from getting in there because they can't get their heads underneath of there and push that up because this hits them in the back in the belly or in the back legs so they can't push this up to get the dog food otherwise they'll eat all the dog food uh, and then I just got a gravity feed uh, dog feeder we just put the feed in the top here I just filled them up yesterday so they have plenty of dog food um, then what I do is I just got a piece of high tensile here and I uh, I just wire it on there and pull it along so here hold on a second I gotta do something tricky here okay all right let's get this untied whoop sorry about that it's real life folks real life okay well get that untied put that back on there for next time okay 
Then, uh, so when we put this away, we hang the chain up on the top. Put on the chain. Sorry, I'm whipping it around pretty good. Hang the chain up top there, and then the chain is not uh, in, on the ground. Then when you come to get it next time, it's all good. So I'm gonna spin this around. We gotta, gotta kind of face it away from the wind. We got a north wind here. So there you go, CJ. There's your feeder, buddy. Good boy. All right, we'll drop Chad's off a little bit farther away. There goes the sheep. They were confused. They finally saw the cattle down there. The cattle were already up because they were getting a uh, drink of water. So they were up here and they saw me messing around with the bobcat and figured I should feed them. So I got a bale on the unroller and unrolled. There's our lead ewe right there. She's not leading them right now, but normally in the summertime when we're moving that's the first animal through the gate normally so uh all right let's move this feeder down so we can look at that holding pen real quick i don't want to get this video too long uh, but uh yeah so it's a pretty nice day it's supposed to get up into the 30s uh kind of pretty nice actually so we're gonna this feeder right here I like to put the feeders a good distance apart it just kind of keeps the dogs from keeps the dogs from getting after each other and about the food this one's a little easier just I just hook it to the ball hitch behind the geo here and I'll just spin it around but uh, yeah these dog feeders make things pretty Pretty nice for having the dogs out here. It's real easy to keep them out here. You can just move their feeder around real easy. Yeah, finally got to use that unit. It uh, sat in the garage for a good month or so. Finally, had a good reason to use it. Okay, all right, done messing around. Yeah, there you can see I got more hay out for the next coming, I don't know, hopefully one a day. I got 10 bales laying there. My hay pile's getting a little smaller. I'm hoping I got enough to make it to grass. We'll see. I'm not sure yet. I might have to get a few more bales, so we'll just see how it goes. Here, let's get up here I'll have to admit this thing is kind of fun to drive in the snow see it throws up some rooster tails pretty good yeah cattle are all looking pretty good all right I'll shut this off I'll show you Real quick, take a look at this holding area if you're still here. I don't know, it's gonna be a long video here. But live action. Okay, so the idea is to run a poly from that end post across. I'm gonna move this geo out of here, but run a poly from there to that gate there. And then run a poly from here to that end post right there. And then get them in here, crowd them in after that bull. So if we get that bull and a couple others, it's not a big deal. But run them in, and then I this is my gate latch. I kick it. I just give it a kick out, and then the gate starts closing. And then I can crowd them in here. I'll swing that gate around. I a couple gates there in case I need them. Kick this out. Swing this gate around. Right to here. Then we open this one up. 
and then we'll chain it together right here not right now but and then the vent chute's gonna sit right here and then I got a couple four foot gates in case we need to tie his chute to this gate so we can make sure it's secure they don't squeeze out the side but I put some sand down for some traction for us and for the animals and then yeah there's a gate down there ideally it'd be better to have a gate like right here on this one so that this this uh, pen is a little smaller so it flows a little bit better but I think this will work for what we're doing in the future I'll get it going but this is sort of an adaptation of a bud box so uh, hoping it works out good all the videos I've watched of bud boxes operating are pretty sweet so I hope I can reproduce that type of results but uh, yeah so I just wanted to show you that quick and uh, not sure if I'll be able to get any video of the vet being here or anything like that so we will uh, have to see about that but oh yeah this these panels that I got I good friends with the with the with the junkyard over there with my buddy over there and uh, he's uh, they had these horse stalls and they were just gonna be scrap and I so I picked them up for scrap price and boy they make a really nice little holding pen here and in the future the idea is to get a roof over top of here so if it's hot or raining we don't have to work in the the heat the sun or the rain so but uh yeah no pretty nice little deal and hoping we uh hoping it works out good for us so all right everybody have have a good day if you're still watching. Thanks. Bye.